Can we just go around and do quick introductions? You guys okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll start right here. Who you are, where you're from, why you're here. Who are you? I'm Nikki Smithson. <laughs> we live in St. George. I am a mom of seven. I have three queer kiddos, and I'm here because I want to be everywhere. <laughs> oh, that's right. the Don't want to miss out on anything. Fear of missing out. Sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I'm Pamela Gilla, and we have um, two queer children. And um, we have three total. Three total, and we mm -hmm. have uh, we live in St. George, Utah, and we're. Um, we volunteer a lot at the In Circle Home. Okay, thank you. I'm Greg O'Gella. We're brother and sister. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. I can say no all the time. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Donna. Donna. <laughs> Donna's our boss at In Circle. I'm not a, I'm not a boss. I'm not a boss. <laughs> I'm just also there. <laughs> I don't have any other stories. Okay. Favorite fruit then? Melon, for sure. Right? What's your favorite Melon. fruit? Melon. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll remember that. All right. So how can you pick one favorite fruit? Okay. Because um, I was forced to. Lisa Knapp, I have five children. My youngest son is gay, and today's his birthday. Oh, oh happy so birthday. He's 30. Youngster. Something like that. <laughs> um, and just here because I love my affirmation family and mm. I've met really good lifelong friends here and always always trying to learn and grow and be a better friend and ally. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you. Okay. Yo soy Mary. Este, vivo en México. Mary. I heard Mary and I heard Mexico. I recognize those words. Please don't take my job. <laughs> You're amazing at your job, by the way. Love your dictation. My name is Neri, and I live in Mexico, Torreón, Coahuila, or Coahuila is the word. Oh, thank you. Es la primera vez que vengo yo aquí. This is the first time that I attend. Oh. ¿Cómo se dice organizar la conferencia? Welcome. Este, de yo también vengo apoyando a a a mi hijo. I come here because I want to also support my oldest son. ¿Cómo se llama? Dígale. Ah, Francisco. Francisco. Okay. Okay. He and he is vice president this year. Oh, oh, okay. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Alicia Bowling. I'm from Saratoga, so I'll just go for the late. Mm -hmm. um, and I am here, um, so I have a trans son, and this is my second time. We came, he and I came last year, and it was the first time as a mom that. I was able to see, like, he's going to be okay, like, in, in the youth program, yeah, and yeah. just being able to see him get up and sing, and just all the things, so we wouldn't miss it, because it, it meant a lot to us last year. That's neat. I can see, I can see that in your emotion, that it meant a lot to you. Mm -hmm. I remember my first time at Affirmation as well, um, scared. I didn't come for a few years even though I knew about it because I was too afraid to come and then when I did I was too afraid to be with the adults so I spent my whole time in with the youth and many of them I knew because of Encircle um, and and it was very comforting for me as well and a lot of fun so thank you um, my name is Julia Campbell and I'm an interpreter thank you Thank you for being here. Okay. All right. Well, my name is Donna, and you'll learn more about me as we get going here. Um, some of you already know too much about me. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. No. It's very generous of you. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I have a confession to make. But first, I want, I want to hear a little confession from, from you.
So, <laughs> so raise your hand if your LGBT kid or kids have already come out. Okay, me too. All right. Um, raise your hand if um, you didn't know what to say when they came out and you were terrified. <laughs> me too. Okay. Um, raise your hand if you regret your initial reaction when your loved one came out. Okay, I, I want to hear these stories because I've got mine. Um, let's see. Raise your hand if you wish you could go back and have a do-over in what you said or how you reacted. Me too. Um, raise your hand if you felt anxious or afraid in the last three months. About that or about anything? Yeah. I mean, the, I guess it doesn't, yes. about that specifically, but the feelings are the same no matter what's causing them. So, right. yeah. Um, so those are all things that I felt when my kid came out and I had a lot of fears, which sadly I allowed to drive. So I want to read you a poem by Elizabeth Filbert from her book, Bug Magic. Um, and I might wear glasses. We'll see. Oh, yes. I <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Dear fear, creativity and I are about to go on a road trip together. I understand you'll be joining us because you always do. I acknowledge that you believe you have an important job to do in my life and that you take your job seriously. Apparently, your job is to induce complete panic whenever I'm about to do something interesting. And may I say you are superb at your job. So by all means, keep doing your job if you feel you must. But I will also be doing my job on this road trip, which is to work hard and stay focused. And creativity will be doing its job, which is to be stimulating and inspiring. There's plenty of room in this vehicle for all of us, so make yourself at home. But understand this. Creativity and I are the only ones who will be making any decisions along the way. You're allowed to have a seat, and you're allowed to have a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. You're not allowed to touch the road maps. You're not allowed to suggest detours, and you're not allowed to fiddle with the temperature. Dude, you're not even allowed to touch the radio. But above all else, my old familiar friend, you're absolutely forbidden to drive. That's a hard lesson to learn. So my confession is this. When my kid first came out, I was broadsided. I was completely, um, this was like brand new information. I was shocked. And at first it was, I was shocked into silence. And then when I did speak, I said all the wrong things. Um, we even wrote to Elder Holland begging him to bless our son and heal him of being gay. Um, so this is my beautiful, bright child, one of my ch children. It, can you guys see okay with all the brightness and everything? Can we, is there a way yeah, we can put the blinds down behind? No, I guess if you're good, I'm good. Right there. I've got my glasses on so I can only see what's in front of my face. <laughs> Okay. There might be oh no. There's like three of them. There's, there's a full train over there. I don't know. If there's one here. Really? Oh, yeah. Do you think so? Maybe a little. Cool I mean, it's good exercise, <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> no? <laughs> Things I should have thought about before. There you go. coming down? Okay. Yeah, especially that final one helped. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. And if we can turn off some of the lights at the back, that would probably be helpful too. Hey, Drew, could you switch off the lights? I can mess with it a lot. Oh, good. But we still want to be able to see you, so. Oh, yeah. You're going in the right direction. Oh, there we go. Hey, that's, that's the one. Okay. We'll do that one. Thank you. Do it again. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're way too complicated nowadays. <laughs> I'll let you work on that. I'll work on this. <laughs> um, so Angel came to me and said, why am I gay? And that question was the line of demarcation between the person I used to be to the painful, forced, utterly necessary change I had to undergo. In that moment, although there's no way I could have foreseen it, I, went a com I underwent a complete paradigm shift. My entire universe and everything in it shifted. So in 1515, Copernicus proposed that the Earth was a planet and that it circled the sun. 
So until then, it was a well-known scientific fact that the Earth was the center of the universe and that the sun and all the other planets revolved around us. And it's just like us, right, to think that everything revolves around us. So he was um, labeled a heretic and he was ridiculed. And then the world began to realize he was right. And what had been hailed as scientific fact was forced to undergo a paradigm shift. Um, and now I understand what that actually means, that paradigm shift. So um, a couple of years ago, I wrote an article um, called uh, What I Wish I'd Known Before My Kid Came Out. And I polled a lot of mama dragons. And I want to read you some of the things that they said. I wish I'd been more outspoken about what my heart was saying. I wish I'd known about the high suicide ideation among LGBT individuals. And I wish I'd known that my child was at risk. I wish I'd been an ally and advocate. I wish I'd known how lonely, depressed, anxious, and isolated he felt all those years. If I'd spent time thinking about or educating myself, maybe the next few years wouldn't have been so difficult. Maybe I would have cried less and loved more. Um, I would have embraced him more fully in that moment instead of, instead of letting my fear speak for me. And, and that fear sent the message that he was not okay. And I, quick story. So Angel came out as gay in 2015 and then non, uh, came out as non-binary trans about a year ago. So um, their pronouns are she, they, and they changed their name to Angel. So I, I will mix up things, <laughs> try to follow along, and I will try to correct myself every time I get it wrong, um, which is definitely a learning process for me. So um, reaching out into the darkness is one of the most frightening and most vulnerable things I've ever done. And I was desperate um, because I knew that if I didn't learn, it might damage them and it might really damage my relationship with them um, maybe forever. So I reached out into the darkness and, and started to learn. Um, the learning curve was really steep. And you know when you go on a hike and you trip over um, a route that's in the trail? So you go back to the next person and say, there's a, there's a route right here, be careful. So this is me letting you know that there are some routes in the trail that you might want to be aware of. Um, and I, I hope that they make your journey easier, and I hope that they also allow you to wrap your queer kids up in, in your love. Um, stronger, of course, yes. Sorry. My, is, oh, I think the microphone is only for the recording, not for us. So, and I don't... I'll just talk louder. <laughs> okay. Um, so in all these pictures, Angel looks really happy. <laughs> and that's, he was really, they were really good at masking how they were really feeling. There were hints now and then when they would come home and say, everybody at school expects me to just be happy. Like, I'm the happy one. I'm the one that goes from group to group and is always smiling and always accepting. And, and people don't allow me. Like I'm, it's like I'm not allowed to ever be sad. And this was before they came out, and, and I didn't even take that hint. <laughs> so um, they became pretty suicidal after they came out. And um, we spent a lot of time, a lot of time, um, just trying to keep this kid alive and, and everything that that entails. Um, and the, he was, Angel was 13 when they came out to us. And then um, 16 when they came out to, like publicly to the world. So, um, so I talked about reaching out into the darkness and trying to find resources because I was blissfully and purposefully ignorant about everything LGBT up to that point. Um, here are some of the things that I found. Um, affirmation, obviously. And if you, ha if you have not heard of these, um, I've, I've added the, their website so that you can go and look. I think PFLAG is not up and running in, in Utah right now, um, but it could be, and you might be the one. And they, it has been. It has been in the past. in the past. Yes, and they, they've had chapters in Provo and Salt Lake. And actually, um, my first PFLAG meeting, PFLAG stands for Parents and Family, Parents, for. Families. families and Loved Ones of Gay 
lesbian and gays. Lesbian, yes, parents and families of lesbians and gays. Yeah. Thank um, you. Not trans. Lori Davis, I think, is starting a new chapter in Solving Again. Oh, wonderful. Okay, that's good to know. And you're missing Dragon Dads. I can't <laughs> believe I didn't have, oh, I'm sorry. Dragon Mamas, I mean, Slash Dragon, Dragon Dads. Dads, yeah. So the Mama Dragons, Dragon Dads. Yes, no, you're not related, but very important. <laughs> Um, this, these are, the, and I'm, I'm showing you what I learned at that time. There, there's a very long list that we could add to this, but this is wh where I found resources in the beginning. So, Flourish Therapy, Lift and Love, Peculiar, the Utah Pride Center, and Encircle. Um, and you can take a picture of this, or I'll, I'll share the slides later, or whatever. But, but please look up these resources because they, they are very, very helpful. No matter where you're at, like fully believing to. I've completely left and everything in between. Um, there are resources out there no matter who you are. So the most important resource, the first resource that I found was the Family Acceptance Project. I think you all have the booklet here. Um, I'm going to go over here, maybe. Can't find my mouse and I only have one screen. Never mind. There's an, um, a Deseret News article that um, <laughs> Drew just informed me about. Uh, where they talked about the Family Acceptance Project. So I'll tell you a little bit more about it. The Deseret News, yes, this was in 2016, I think. Is that correct? Yeah, you can Google it. It's like the very first thing that comes up. So Family Acceptance Project, Deseret News, and it's the first article that you find there. Um, Caitlin Ryan out of the San Francisco State University put together a comprehensive longitudinal study, and that's what this is. And even though the family, so here's what she said. Even though the family is the primary support for children and youth, and family involvement helps reduce adolescent risk, there has, sorry, there had been no previous comprehensive studies of how parental caregiver and family reactions contribute to LGBT children's risk and well-being. So prior to this study, little information was available to show how families respond to learning about a child's LGBT identity and how family and caregiver reactions contribute to health, mental health, and development. So the project was designed to do four things. First, to study parents, families, and caregivers' reactions and adjustments to an adolescent's coming out and LGBT identity. Second, to develop research-based education, training, and assessment materials for health, mental health, school-based providers, child welfare, juvenile justice, and on and on. Number three, develop resources to strengthen families to support LGBT children and adolescents and the last one, develop a new model for family-related care to prevent health and mental health, risky, mental health risks and keep families together and promote permanency and well-being for LGBT children and adolescents. Um, ha have any of you, have it, how many of you have heard of the Family Acceptance Project before today? I have not. I have not. Okay, okay. This is incredible so here here's some statistics for you and this is straight from here so if you I, I think it's in here yes these graphics are actually in the booklet and when I picked this up for the first time that's what I saw first pictures <laughs> and 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 um, and it was very helpful for me actually so in this in this graphic you can see that gay and transgender adolescents who have who had many experiences of rejection were at much higher risk for trying to commit suicide, sorry, to die by suicide, um, than in families where there was little rejecting or none at all. Gay and transgender youth from highly rejecting families were more than eight times as likely to try to take their own lives by the time they were young adults. In families that were moderately rejecting, so they had some negative reactions to their LGBT child, but also some positive reactions, those young people um, had who had even a little bit more acceptance were only twice as likely to try to take their own lives, which is still a shocking statistic. Uh, gay and transgender young adults who were highly rejected by their parents and caregivers had poorer health than other LGBT youth who were not rejected by their families. They had more problems with drug use, they felt more hopeless, and they were less likely to protect themselves from HIV and STIs. Another telling graphic. As with risk for suicide, LGBT young people with high levels of family rejection were more than three times as likely to use illegal drugs compared with young people from families with little or no rejection. Their illegal use of drugs is cut in half when families are even moderately rejecting instead of 
mostly rejecting. LGBT young people from highly rejecting families are more than three times as likely to be at high risk for HIV and sexually transmitted diseases. Their risk is cut in half when families are only moderately rejecting. Um, something, and we'll get to this, but in, in this pamphlet, I hope that you'll take time to read all of it, but um, I'm trying to find where it is in here. In the middle, in the, in the very middle. So there's a list on this side of highly rejecting behaviors. And there's a list on this side of, of highly accepting behaviors. Um, this is one of the things that I read first, and I made a mental note in my head. Have I done any of these? Um, because my kid was, was, uh, had suicide ideation pretty, pretty bad. And I'm like, am I contributing to that? And I really felt like, and I know that this is a complicated, very complex subject, but I felt like at that time, if my kid dies by suicide, it will be my fault <laughs> because, because I wasn't doing everything that I could. Um, so uh, let's go through some of those things. So, um, and this is on this, the poster here too. So I'm just gonna read this. Family behaviors that increase your, your LGBT child's risk for serious health and mental health problems. So here are some behaviors that hurt. And I, I'll let you read them, but a key finding from this research um, is that a little change makes a big difference. So families and caregivers who are struggling can start by decreasing some of the rejecting behaviors. Um, they can try, let's see, especially if you're trying to deny or change or minimize their sexual orientation or their gender expression. Um, these are some of the things that I read through and I'm like, I could make a check. Okay, I didn't, I haven't done that. I haven't done that. Ooh, I might be doing that a little, you know, and, and really adjusting my perspective and my behavior. Um, even if I wasn't really ready emotionally or I didn't believe, you know, honestly at first when Angel told us that they were LGBT, I didn't believe them. <laughs> and so uh, I'm like, how could you possibly know you know, you haven't even hit puberty. I was very uneducated in all this, but, but I, I did realize that if I wanted to keep my kid alive, let me stop there. I have learned that if a mother's love was enough to save a child, that no child would die by suicide. We can love them with our whole heart and do everything we possibly can to accept and, and support them. And sometimes, I mean, suicide is very complex. And, and um, I'm just, this is where I was at the time. But so there, there are behaviors that can help. So that's also in here, that's, that's this list right here. Um, even if you can just pick one of those things that you haven't been doing. And, and I'll tell you a little story about uh, what I did. Um, one of the, the, I think the highly rejecting behaviors is, is not allowing your kid to have their friends over who are also LGBT. I was afraid that if, if Angel's friends came over that, um, that maybe they would kiss or, or maybe they would talk about things that were inappropriate. And they didn't. They they watched movies together and they made cookies together and they swung on the swing in the backyard and they just did things that kids do. Um, and, but it was very affirming for them to see that we were okay to have their friends over. Um, even though I, there were still parts of it that were uncomfortable for me at first. Um, but I, I tried to reach beyond that to what I knew would help my kid. So here's some things you can do to help. Um, I, can you see these? Yeah. You can read them. Okay, okay. Um, and just maybe make a mental checklist. I'm doing that. Whew, okay. Oh, here's something I can start to do. Um, one of the things that I did was I started to ask Angel about who they were interested in. Do you have a crush on anybody? Are, you know, who are you dating right now? Um, and the look on their face was like disbelief. <laughs> like, do you really want to know? And, and um, I was, at the time, practicing my poker face. Like, I'm screaming inside, <laughs> but I know that this is what my kid needs to feel accepted and loved. And so I, I'm going to ask the questions and I'm going to say the things, even though I, maybe I'm not quite there yet, um, this is what they need. 
So, and let's go through this. So, um, family acceptance helps reduce risk and promotes well-being. So this is n no or low family accepting behaviors, and these are highly accepting behaviors. And you can see the the outcomes for these. And these and this this is longitudinal studies that have have shown this time and time again um, that if you can just give up one of those highly rejecting behaviors, your kid's outcome just skyrockets. So. Um, let me, oh boy, I literally can't find my mouse, you guys. Oh, hi. Well. So scroll it over to the, to the side and it should come up to your screen. Just move, <laughs> yeah, keep moving it, keep moving it. Well, on your track. Oh, look, I can see. Yeah. Okay. You want it there? <laughs> sure, I want it here, actually. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, All right. First, I just want to take you to the family acceptance um, website. So they have a lot of really great resources. Um, I wanted to click on this one second actually, but we're going to do it now. <laughs> and I hope you'll be able to hear it. Can you hear it? Oh. It's only showing a mark. Even from those very early moments, you know, you have set expectations within your own mind of you what you it? see your child growing up to be. Looking back, it is amazing to me how many things I just explained away that now make so much sense. I, it was really depressing to see my parents supporting something that was completely against what I was. His parents hate gay people. His church hates gay people. And that's the message that was received. And that was what we had to overcome. It was very confusing for me growing up Mormon and thinking now I have a son that's gay, like how does this fit? What I saw his life would be, what I expected his life to be, was now gone. Our most important value as a church is the family. I was mortified at the idea of being disowned by my parents. It's like, what's the point of my life? I, I, I didn't have answers. I was thinking I would just like get all the pills, take them all at once, and die right then. There is something not right with a 13-year-old having to think that. And we just talked to him. He said, Jordan, this changes nothing. I said, you are perfect in my eyes, and I love you, and you're exactly the way I want you to be, and we'll figure this out. Reading and hearing stories of parents throwing their kids out in my church and thinking that's what our church is telling them to do that's not the church i was raised in and it is not the god and the christ that i believe in this is not the end of the world this is the beginning of your world and how you're going to live that and the things that you're going to do are going to be magnificent This is just one of the videos that is available on the Family Acceptance website. Um, I'm going to attempt. <laughs> I, I can't get my mouse back to my. Oh, I found it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this is what it's like to have two screens. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh boy, you guys. What do you want on that screen? I, so, okay. I have. There you go, you're on this, you're on the big one. Oh wait. Well, hold now on. You're on the big one. Oh my gosh. See, there you are. Now you're off to the other one. Okay, hold on. I apologize. <laughs> What I wanted to do <laughs> was show you um, some of the um, resources that are available on the on the Family Acceptance Project w website. So, and there are many. Um, so, is it from this screen here? It's it's not. It's actually I now. You want to show this? One? I can't. Yeah, but I can't. So, find click this my, tab here. Hold on, I gotta find my. Yeah, bring it over. Okay. Okay. 
So click and hold, and then keep dragging it to that screen. Hold on. That's exactly. Do you know which way we have to go to get to this screen? Is it right or left? I don't know. Just go. I think it's going to be. Okay, you're doing good. Keep going. There you go. There you go. It's there. Okay. And so now you move your mouse over to that screen. Ta-da! Yep, okay, keep it on that screen. Okay. You have your tab. Stay up. right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is the family acceptance um, web page or website, and you can go here. And I'm just going to scroll down, and you can see all of the resources. So they have um, places where you can learn how you can be more accepting as a family. Um, there are resources around the country, so you can search around the country for resources in your area. They also have resources, um, they, have, they have crisis lines, culture-based resources, evidence-based resources, faith-based resources, wow. and other national resources. So there's just a lot here. There's, um, and, and so that's just from the Family Acceptance Project, and there's all those other ones that I, that I named earlier. Um, now. Can go back to your slideshow? Going to try. Okay, so look at your mouse <laughs> on the screen. Okay. You can see the middle tab. Now go up, 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 over the other way. Don't close them, just in case. But okay, over one more. See where it says FAP. This is your Google slide. Yeah, that one. There you go. Now you get to see the underbelly. <laughs> of um, it. I'm gonna do slideshow. Hmm? Yeah, like percent. There we go. There you go. Okay, okay. How many of you know Lisa Hansen? <laughs> like I do attribute my child's life to her. There was a day when, when Angel couldn't go to their therapy appointment with her. And so I knew that I was going to be paying the fee anyway. <laughs> so, so I said, can I please come? And I spent an hour with her and I said, I need you to tell me everything I need to know to keep my kid alive. And, um, and I started writing furiously. And she taught me a lot in that hour, um, and I've learned a lot since then. But, but here are some of the things that she said. She said, memorize these. And even if you don't feel it, um, you say it anyway. So I learned very quickly, any future where you're happy is better than suicide. And it's better for me than suicide. I will dance at your wedding. And in my heart, I was like, I don't know if I can do that, but I'm going to say it because if that's what keeps my kid here for right now, that's what I'll do. You're going to be miraculous. The world needs you as you are. I am so excited to get to be part of your future. I wouldn't miss it. That I meant. I meant that. I love you because you exist, and I can't wait to see who you're becoming. I remember the day that um, Angel came home from school and I had memorized one of these or whatever and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try this. And I, I remember saying, um, I, I'm so excited to meet whoever you bring home and I'm going to love them as much as I love you. They will be part of our family too. And the look on their face, I'll never forget that look. It First disbelief and then this this. Um, recognition that that I'm trying <laughs> and that and and that I really did mean that and it meant that I was seeing a future where Angel could be happy where he didn't at that point they didn't and and saying things like this along the way helped them to see a future where they could be happy where they would want to stay um, Here are some things that other people have said. I'm going to read these. A broken family is a family in which any member must break herself into pieces to fit in. A whole family is one in which every member can bring her full self to the table knowing that she will always be both held and free. That's Glennon Doyle. We can create an emotionally healing space for the discriminated against, the rejected, and the stranger. That was Neil L. Anderson. If I build a wall between me and my child, who will they come to later in life? That was my stake president. My stake president also said, he is not lost and he is not broken. Too many families are being torn apart by beliefs that seem more important than people. I can't remember who said it. <laughs> 
And we are called to be one in love, but very often we trample love in a rush to the familiar comfort of fear and judgment. Some very wise person on Instagram said that. <laughs> so how are Angel and I doing now? I do. And if I could explain to you, I, there are no words. There just are no words. If I had known five years ago or seven years ago what today would look like, where I would be, that I'd be standing here instead of crying at the back of the room, I, w I, I just would have spent a lot less time crying. Yeah. So, and a lot more time just loving. And anyway, so here, okay, a few pictures. Um, this is Angel now. And we, we go to rallies together. Angel is into drag. And, and I know that there are, it's a controversial subject right now. Um, I, so stupid. So stupid. Oh, drag or the controversy? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's definitely an art form. Um, and I, I have seen Angel absolutely come alive. Um, their persona on stage is so completely different than them in real life where they're just kind of not quiet by any means but um just so normal and then you get them on stage in a wig and makeup and they just transform into this other th i remember seeing them in drag for the first time first of all i didn't recognize them they're walking straight at me and i'm like who's this person coming right at me they were right next to me before i even recognized them and then watching them perform for the very first time it was another worldly experience. Like I was, my mouth was wide open and my eyes were wide open and I was laughing uncontrollably. <laughs> it was so great. Anyway, um, so they, they have found their passion. Um, they, they have an, a fantastic group of friends that they met um, at Encircle. There's more information. I think there's a table out there if you wanna know more about Encircle. Um, it's just, it's a youth resource center for families and LGBT youth. And the friends that they met the very first day at Encircle are still their very best friends. They're just like this, their core group of like chosen family. So they are doing great. And they even um, got me into drag this one time. That's me actually, <laughs> surprisingly. Um, and it was, and, and so then I had a whole new appreciation for drag and how hard it is, hard. It took three hours to make me look like that. Three hours! <laughs> anyway, it's, it's crazy and they're very, very happy. Um, we had an opportunity last year to um, be on the Kelly Clarkson show and talk a little bit about um, being accepting. And uh, so I'll, I'll play you just a little, actually I think, hold on if I can find my mouse. I'm going to play you just one little clip from, from the show. You know what? Maybe I'll just do it from here. Hold on. Wow, this mouse is just so elusive. There you go. Oh, found it. Okay. Let's see if it works. Okay, we're going to listen to a commercial. To Sadie did. And now she I apologize. <laughs> um, then I'm going to see if we can get it to... Where is the mouse? Okay. I won't play the whole thing. You can look it up on online, but um, I just want to get to this one. School and so people are jerks. Angel. How that's bad was Angel, that yeah. When you finally yeah. like came to terms. Like did you Hang on. immediately at school kind of tell people or what what was that like? Yeah, it was So this is Angel now. Even better. There out of drag. Some low moments. I wanna um, after I uh, of still going through. So what kay. do you want families out there to know? Can I think I'd speak that? to parents, maybe. And that is to say that the child who comes out to you is the same child they were five minutes ago, before you knew this, because they've probably known for a long time. Mm. They are the same beautiful, loving, creative person that they've always been. Then the question is, how will you react and, and how will you treat them going forward? Um, for me, it was a long process. It was, it was difficult and it was life-changing in, in what in the moment felt like the worst ways but turned out to be the most beautiful, incredible ways. Um, I learned to love with my whole heart. And I think I, what I would say to other parents is to trust your child and just love them 
love them and listen to your own heart. Don't listen to anything outside of you. No one knows your child the way you do. Mm -hmm. No one can love them the way you do. Just love your child. Just love them. Girl, you are killing me today. <laughs> 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 Like a motivational. Anyway, you can watch that later if you want to. <laughs> um, hold on. I'm learning. I'm, yeah, there you go. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I'm almost there. My goodness. There you go. You're on there. I am? Go up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Over, over one more. That right there. Okay. Ooh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there. I'm done. <laughs> Um, so what for what for us started out as something that felt really traumatic for the whole family um, and felt that way for a long time and there were a lot of ups and downs it was definitely a roller coaster a whole lot of tears um, and and then slowly over time those tears turned to a joy that I I couldn't have comprehended to be honest um, and I and I really do um, like there are, there are a few things that really, really helped. The Family Acceptance Project was probably number one because I was actually able to read that cover to cover eight times and, and really um, know within myself that, that Angel wasn't the one who needed to change. I was the one who needed to change. And, and then I started to do whatever that took. Um, Lisa Hansen and Flourish Therapy was absolutely instrumental in, in um, keeping Angel alive and, and honestly keeping me alive for a little while there. And then um, Encircle was a place that I found when it very first opened um, and encouraged Angel to go and meet other people because up until that point, we both felt like we were completely alone. They were the first person that had ever come out of their high school. Um, and I didn't know any, I thought that I didn't know anybody who was LGBT. I didn't know any moms of LGBT people, and we felt really, really isolated and alone. Um, so walking into Encircle uh, was life-changing because we realized we, we weren't alone, that there are other moms out there who are going through the same thing, and there are other kids um, going through the same thing. So um, I would say find community. Looks like you've done that. Um, and, and find ways to um, find joy in what is. Um, Angel is LGBT. Nothing, nothing can change that. Nothing will change that. And, and I don't want that to change. Even if I could, I wouldn't. Um, but, but I did have to find, I did for myself have to learn how to live in the beauty of what is. And it is indeed beautiful. So um, that's all I have for you. If, if you have questions, Please. So I am a father of a transgender um, son. And Tyler came out when he was three the first time. Oh, wow. Cut all his hair off and told us that he wanted to be uh, a boy. And we thought, oh, it's just a phase. He's going to be a tomboy. You know, that went through the whole thing. My mom had a master's degree in early childhood mm -hmm. development. We called her up and said, oh, what do we do? And she did a bunch of research. And we, we didn't know what we were doing. And eventually we divorced over this. And so mm -hmm. this is a different story that I'll, I'll skip that part for the moment. But um, Tyler transitioned socially when he was 11. And we had um, the then Pride Center um, in Salt Lake was run by a lady who was a, a evangelical pastor, and she and I think I think she and Mika and maybe Karen Penman came down to our house. Yeah. And then we're you know Tyler's 21 now, so this was 10 years ago, and um, and brought us this book among other things. But we we read it and took it to heart. Mm -hmm. Seven years later, six years later, when Tyler was 17, he had top surgery, finally. Um, I mean, we, we did everything, you know, he, he did the hormones, he did the blockers first and then hormones and then top surgery. And he put so much hope 
in the fact that the top surgery would change the dysphoria that he was feeling. Yeah. And we we knew this up front when we talked about about the fact that um, it's not going to fix everything. Um, just to, to transition, and, and but he had super high hopes. And about four months after, maybe three months after, he came. Sorry. Never apologize for that. came and woke me up. They said, Dad, I need to go to the hospital. And I said, let me put my pa pants on and let's go. And we did. And if you've been around this for a while, you have friends, I have friends, a lot of us do, who have kids that didn't come and wake mom and dad up. Yeah. And they're gone. Yeah. But I earned that from years and years and years of doing this. It doesn't make it all go away. It doesn't solve it all. It, but what it does is it makes it so that they see you as a resource. Yeah. And when they go through the crap that they're getting at school or at church or in the neighborhood or just in the world in general or from Republicans right now, <laughs> they, they will, will say, you know, yeah. my mom and my dad have my back. They're, they are on my team, and they're there for me. And, um, geez, that, I mean, Tyler was 17 then. He's 21 now. He's finally a brilliant kid, but mm -hmm. had a bad experience with school there for a few years at the very end. Um, always had great grades, and in the very end, he kind of was like everything we could do to get him through, and he's... Yeah taken a bit of a break and now he's enrolling at Utah State for the first time. He's got his own apartment. Yeah. Out of all wow. my kids, he's, he, he like he came, he came to me and he said, I think I've got school covered, but I don't know if I can pay for my apartment and go to school because I don't know if I can work enough. And I'm like, all I had to do was ask, but I he, like he's independent at this point and he runs his own life and he, his favorite things are he does tactical airsoft with his buddy and he launches on his WRX car to see if he can make it go faster. So that's that's what he loves to do and he's a hard worker and he's brilliant and he's super smart and most of his friends don't know that he's transgender. Uh, he came, came to my house last fall. He was on his way down to St. George to go on a three-day tactical airsoft game. The dude is going to go spend the weekend shooting buddies and they set this whole war up and over <laughs> acres where there's flags that you're out of bounds. I was crazy. And I had gotten him a, a knit cap that has the trans flag on it. And I'm like, dude, do you want this? And he's like, later. He's like, I'm like, they don't know. Like, so he's going camping for three days with two other guys in a pickup truck. And they, they have no idea. There's his good buddies, but he's not really close with those guys. They just like this hobby with him. Yeah. They have no idea he's trans. He passes super well, and he's he's doing great. But he, the, 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 there are hard times ahead for any family that has a queer kid. Yeah. And um, Mormon or not, the, 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 they're, you know, just society as a whole. But when, when you do this, you become a team member and you're on their side with Dragon Dads. We have dads that come in all the time 
that have already screwed up their relationship. And one of the things we always tell them is, you need to go spend a lot of money on, Am it's not even a lot, on Amazon, buy a whole bunch of pride flags and stick them out in front of your house. Because the open acceptance and, and aff affirmation of who they are, and that you're, you're up for it and you're willing to uh, openly acknowledge that is going to change things for you, and it does. And it, it, it opens the conversation and it makes it so those kids realize their parents are not ashamed and they're not, um, they're on the same team. And it, it, it changes, lets them know visibly, I'm making a declaration of my mindset and, and uh, my acceptance of who you are. So it's things like that that make a huge difference. They yeah. really do. Yeah. So. It's never too late to mend a relationship and it's never too late to go back and say I did this all wrong can I have a do-over you know or I I said all the wrong things I've, I've I didn't know what I know now and and I would love to start again you know and be curious I love that just being curious you know asking a lot of questions what does this mean for you in and and if, when you come at it with curiosity instead of like well what does it mean that's very different than what does it mean? You know, it, like your kid knows where you're coming from. And, and if you can come to them with a lot of curiosity and humility, um, that's how we save our kids, you know, and showing in those very tangible ways that, that we love them and that we will stand by them. Lisa. A good side effect of having the pride flags is there might be kids whose parents aren't there yet, and they know that you are a safe yeah. place. And and so there's a, a family in my, because I, I have a pride flag up 365 days a year, and have for 10 or so years. And there's a family in my ward that has, a, in my neighborhood, that has a bisexual daughter. And Multiple people in this family have told me, I really like that you have your flag up. Oh. And this year, the mom finally had courage to fly her bisexual flag wow. from her house. Wow. And it started because I was willing to fly mine. Mm -hmm. I've had teenagers that I don't even know knock on my door or leave notes on my door yep. or under the mat saying, yep. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. They just know someone out there cares and yeah. loves them. Even yeah. if their parents are sort of on board or fully on board, it's nice to know there's someone out there. There's, there's a community, community out there. It's more than yeah, that. yeah. Because uh, I wear my pins yeah. to church, and mm -hmm. I don't know how many kids will come up and thank me for wearing my pin. Wow. Thank you for not being afraid. Thank you for wearing your pin. And I don't have any idea what their orientation is or anything. Yeah. But they know that they can come up to me. Yeah. I have my, I, my we, we signal. <laughs> I still signal. And I have people all the time who come up to me and they'll say, I like your bracelet. And that's all they need to say. Yeah. They don't need to say th nothing. We, it's like, we know. Yeah. We know. Um, and, and Lisa, I have, I'll, I'll come back to you, but I want to say, Lisa and I lived in the same ward 20 years well I lived in the same ward as your family for 20 years and and for that 20 years there was one family that flew a pride flag and it wasn't us and and then we started to fly ours and it got stolen and all kinds of things but um and we got questions why what what are you doing you know even from family members why are you fl what are you doing and yeah why yeah why are you why do you have the flag and and I said you know because they're like do you know what it means and I said, I know what it means for me and for our family. It means that you are safe here and that you, you'll be safe with us and that, and that we are trying to get it, <laughs> even if we don't yet. Um, so that, I, I think that's important. And it's so small. It's the small things. It's really small things that really say, I love you. So, yeah. I was going to say my daughter transitioned from male to female. Uh, started her authentic journey 14 years ago in Gilbert, Arizona, which is highly LDS as well. Mm -hmm. And she shortly after she started her transition, created a brand of transgender clothing and things like. So I'm 
always in a transgender shirt, like 300 <laughs> plus. And my littlest one, I have seven, my littlest one, she's like, mom, people are going to think you're transgender. I'm like, let them think that. Like, <laughs> I, care. Yeah. I wear, I wear t-shirts to church with a, skirts you know or whatever just and i have so many moms and so many kids and so many everybody individuals yeah, yeah. just saying thank you i like it i appreciate that let's we, have a conversation later i'm in, like yeah. whatever in pleasant grove here in the mm -hmm. valley and uh my wife got her mba over covid and mm. I have wow a, i have a brother who is a cardiothoracic pa oh, unit nice. single yeah. And he and I go to, um, we got in the habit of going to a movie every week. And I show if I've got my, my pride yeah. shirt or, or, or this on or <laughs> shoes or whatever every time. And somebody at the movie theater mentioned that they really appreciated seeing a couple there. Oh. <laughs> regularly on a That's regular fine. Date. Oh. I am so glad you did. Oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I absolutely don't care. I'm, I'm like, if I have to take some bullets for my kid uh -huh. so my kid doesn't have to, yeah. he doesn't come yeah. to hardly anything because he doesn't even want to be mm -hmm. seen that way. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. I wore a I wore a rainbow ring and the only finger it fit on was my ring finger, my wedding <laughs> ring finger. And my husband is like, people are going to think that you're gay and if we're not together they're going to think that you're a lesbian married to another lesbian and I'm like that's okay too like I don't I don't care I was going to say for you I wear drag jewelry on my ring fingers oh. my husband's always like okay whatever. I've seen okay. some of yours you're like you can't even lift your arm it's so heavy know, like, nah, like, let me be you, right life is too but short I was going to say after your story like I have personally been in a position where I'm so proud of you and I you. know and I hear your story of your growth and where you look so deeply and intensely with love for your angel and Thank and you. like just to like we've had tears over like just those tender moments that you yeah. just know that you're on the right track sure we probably have made mistakes sure we probably have more growth to do but like I'm very proud of you and your growth. Yeah. Thank you, Nikki. I, I Thank can you. feel it. I see it. Just want to let you know that. That means so much to me. Thank you. Thank you. One of the big transitions for us, so our son came out over 20 years ago. He was towards the end of his junior year at BYU, and, and it was the brick wall. We had zero clues. You know, you go in his room, and there's pictures of all the girls that he went to all the dances with, <laughs> and just zero clue. And it was rough because then the church was saying that it was a choice. And having been a bishop and everything else, it was like, son, it's a choice. What are you doing? You know, it's, and so I was kind of on the wrong side of it for a while. And he's a very forgiving son. Uh, our, his oldest sister came out about 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she's now married to a woman. And, but the big, seems like a big step came when we found In Circle two years ago. And they saw us going to In Circle and sharing with them the things we were learning. And then they came to In Circle. We have three kids. And all three of them have been to In Circle now, uh, all of them multiple times. And that's been a huge, huge uh, binding force yeah. for us with them yeah. that, you know, my son, I called him on his birthday and uh, said some things and, and he said, he's always said, you know, stop the guilt. I'm not <laughs> the guilty one, it's this one. <laughs> but Who is said, guilty or feels guilty? Feels. Feels. Okay, thank you. Because yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but he he and he said this at In Circle a number of times. There was no handbook for this. Yeah. And twenty plus yeah. years ago, I mean, we called BYU <sighs> and spoke to Merrill Bateman. He, he said, "What what gay kids?" And she said, "Do you not know about the gay kids in the Cougar Eat? You know, they I have mean, their place to they sit. have their place to sit. Come on. No, no, we don't have a problem." And 
And, you know, I spoke to his mission president, and he had come out to his mission president before this, before he came out to us for by a couple of years. And, mm -hmm. and then he, uh, where did we go? Oh, we went to Evergreen in Salt Lake. Oh. Went to one of their meetings, and... Well, that's interesting. The church doesn't have a problem, but they have two general authorities on the board of Evergreen. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised. You know, and it's just... Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of conflicting answers to 20 plus years ago. I don't know. Still. Still. Still, yeah. Still. Well, yeah, yeah, but at least now it's genetic. It's not a choice. <laughs> Well, now we don't know why, but it's not a choice. But yeah. you, you know, I mean, even that, when you, the, you started talking tonight, uh, uh, the, this afternoon, this morning, uh, and, and you said that your paradigm changes. Well, I mean, there's a family right now that I know that they just had, their, their transgender kid just had a genetic test and found out, oh, what do you know? They're XX. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, really? and at this point yeah. now, they get to participate completely in church because, at, of because they have a genetic oh. thing. But, you know, 40 years ago, that wasn't even possible. They right. would just be treated the same way. Mm -hmm. So all it takes is some new scientific discovery, and then all the, suddenly, I mean, we don't, we don't know well, it's not enough. <laughs> yeah, it's not such, but we, we don't know. And, and it's, it's like, oh, well, at least the church is saying, well, we, you know, the science is saying... But I mean, I I know, I know a kid that I met up at BYU, that has a vagina and got married and to his sweetheart that mm -hmm. after his mission that he met at BYU, in the temple the first spring that the that, that the new temple was open over here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I know a a guy who went on a mission and is a, a XX and and uh, built right as far as that goes, but he only found out that he was XX when he couldn't get his wife pregnant. And, and wow. it, both of them hold the priesthood. Is it, is it your genes or is it your genitals that determine? I mean, it, we yeah. just don't yeah. know. Yeah. And yeah. it's so... Uh, <laughs> I, I think um, for me, it was a giant leap to say, I don't know, because I thought I did and until it was my kid. And, and I remember having a conversation with my hairdresser whose son was gay and he was just going through so many hard things. And I was like, why is he choosing this? Like, why doesn't he like, why is he choosing to be gay? And she spun me around in her chair and she held on to the to the both of the armrests. And so she's in my face. We've been she's been doing my hair for 20 plus years. So we're really good friends. And she's like, he did not choose this. And I'm like, well, of course he did. And and she couldn't explain to me. She couldn't make me see it any any other way. I, for me, I needed to learn it myself, and I learned it when my kid came out, and they would rather be dead than gay, and they tried really hard to die instead of being gay, and that's when I realized for me, I don't know about anybody else, but I know for us, for our family, Angel did not choose this, and then I look back at pictures. <laughs> I say it hit me like like it was brand new information. We had we had the script for when our our daughter came home at 17 and said I'm pregnant. I knew because I'd run it through in my head. This is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to say. You know, I I had it in my head um, when my mom comes to me and says I have breast cancer. I knew exactly you know what was going to be next. I never did the what if my kid says I'm gay. That just was never on my radar ever ever at all, and um, until they did. And then I, now I look back at pictures from when they were three, four, and they're standing in a group of, of, of um, Cub Scouts and everybody else is standing like this and they're like this. You know, there, there's just so many, there's so many signs now that I can look back. Um, yeah, definitely not a choice. And, and, I, and I, I will reiterate what I said on the Kelly Clarkson show. Um, I learned for me not to trust any source outside of me. I know my child. I love my child more than anybody else on this planet ever could. And I believe them, whatever it is they tell me. So a couple, I, I focus on Angel a lot when I talk. Um, my oldest also came out um, as non-binary trans about a year ago. And um, I went to, 
to them and I said, what is, because I'm like, what is non, I know what non, I think I know what non-binary is and I think I know what trans is, but what? So I went to them and I said, what does this mean? And they explained it to me and I was like, okay. So then I went to Angel who now identifies as non-binary trans and I said, this is what it means. And they're like, that's not what it means. And I was like, what? <laughs> so um, I have learned to trust my child and anybody else actually. The, their truth is their truth and, and I don't need to understand it or get it to be absolutely loving and accepting. So um, how much time do we have left? I don't even... 45 after and it's 34 after. So okay, okay, I'll stop talking. Does anybody else have questions, comments, stories? Greg. Our, said, our son said the same thing about you know, do you think I would choose this being raised the way I was raised? <laughs> yes. You know, having been raised yes. in the church. He said, do you think I would choose this? Mm -hmm. That's what my kid said, too. Do you think I would choose to be ostracized and pushed out of my friend group and bullied and marginalized? Who, who chooses that? Like, especially as a teenage kid, all you want is to be accepted and, you know, did you? Oh, yeah. You know, when, when your children first come out, it's because you've, like you said, you haven't planned on this. Yeah. And they've done everything not like that. So, you know, it's just something that was really hard. But I remember fasting and praying, and and finally one day God said, I've been telling you this over and mm. over and over again, and this is your last time. Wow. <laughs> and it was just like so plain of it. I sent me. him to you to love. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Not to judge, yeah. but to love. Yeah, yeah. Love him like I love him. Mm. Which you already did, right? Yeah, but I think it, it, when parent, I That's think changed. we think that we love unconditionally yeah. until something yeah. comes <laughs> up. And oh yeah. All of a sudden, then that like. that love unconditionally is challenged. Yeah. And we have to learn what that is for us, yeah. not them for us. Yes. Yes. And, um, and then you have the church on top of it, screwing with your mind, and um, and I don't. It could it could be this church or that church or society or any yeah yeah. Any church can you know and and you're trying to relate, you know, well the prophet says this or this, but inside your heart you don't believe that anymore. But you don't know how to be anymore because yes. he's changed, you yes. change, yes. you start to change. And so you have to, you know, you accept them, but you have to learn to accept yourself at the new me. That new paradigm. That new paradigm. Yeah. The new person that goes to church, not like she used to go to church. Yes. And I don't buy a lot yes. of the... We're on the cafeteria plan. Yeah, we're on the cafeteria <laughs> plan. I just this, that, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And there's fear. Yeah. I think the biggest thing was when he came out was fear. Mm -hmm. Fear for him mm -hmm. and fear for our family. Mm -hmm. Fear for our eternal family. Yes. All those things that we have been taught. Yeah. And things like that. And, you know, and Greg and I started talking afterwards and said, you know, we don't really believe that stuff. Hmm. I mean. The same way. The same way that the church teaches it. Yeah. And so we've become, I mean, we still go to church, but we don't go to church the way we used to. Right, right. You know, and I know when the teacher sees my hand go up, she goes, oh, crap. She's going to say something. There we go, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but, Every ward needs one of those. No. <laughs> we're it. You know, we're it in ours, so. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, at the beginning of your presentation, you said, you know, who regrets how they accepted that. And I was at an advantage, but the... The course was still the same. Find the community yeah. and do this. My oh, sure. was my ex husband had said, I think because our son at the time was struggling mm -hmm. with depression and not wanting to live, not yeah. suicide, but um, yeah. you know, not wanting to live. And he said, I think it might be his sexuality. At that time, I was like, okay. And I had that aha moment of like, I know uh, nothing about this. Yeah. Like, what are we going to do? So I reached out and I was to my aunt, who was the only queer person I knew, and she said, try PFLAG, because in Phoenix, that's what we had. Mm -hmm. This was years ago. Mm -hmm. and um, So I went to PFLAG, which is for lesbians and gays, you know, and they had nothing about transgender. So that was like a whole nother oh, level. Yeah. You know? I was just seeking that support. And sure. they had 
said, don't ask questions, just listen, don't say it's a phase, you know, like they kind of have like pointers that helped <laughs> yeah. me so that when Casey did say, mom, I think oh. I'm gay, I'm androgynous, and then we, you know, her authentic self, she was like, I want to present female full time. And I was like, okay. And she's like, that's what transgender is. I'm like, oh, I've heard that word, but not in this way. Yeah. Right, you right. You know what I mean? And it wasn't really that word, but you know. And um, so, it, you know, again, it was finding that community and knowing and having that education. And I just luckily had like 10 days advance notice from my ex-husband saying she clearly is clueless, you know. <laughs> and I may be like, okay, I'm on board, you know. Yeah the transformation of my kiddo was so uncomfortable to authentically herself and it is yeah. so night and day difference and the feelings and the mm -hmm. love and you know everything that went with that was so good and there's not only pictures of cub scout pictures out there of what i did when they were little there's youtube videos too so you're welcome Mom. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just really quick i'm gonna um, remind me your name. Alicia. Alicia. Alicia, and then Pam. Um, I'll, I'll be quick, but I, you asked if, um, at the beginning if there was regrets, and like when, when your child came out, and it was funny because I think back, and over the years, I was ready. I was ready because I, I thought that hmm. my kid was gay, and I'm like, okay, yeah. they've just got to figure it out. I'm ready, and I know, and I'm well, jealous. My yeah. kid was trans. Ah. Um, but when he came to me, it surprised me, um, not because of how I felt about him, but because of the fear I had yeah. for him. Yeah. And yes. I remember that day, like, standing in my room, and it was night when he came up, and it was dark in our room, and, you know, we talk about it now, and he's like, of course it was dark. I didn't want to see your face, and I didn't want to know what you were going to say when I said this. And, sure. Um, you know, when I grabbed him in a hug that day and I just mm -hmm. started to cry, and I'm like, he can't mm -hmm. see me cry because I don't want him to think I'm crying because I'm upset about who he is. And right. I just remember thinking how scared I was for this journey that he was going to be on. Mm -hmm. And over the last few years, watching him take this journey and, and being on it with him, it's been hard. Yes. And, um, you know, our journey has, has led us out of the church when our our Lord um, mm -hmm. invited us to leave. And um, oh, it, it has been lonely at times. And, but through it all, oh my gosh, through it all, I'm just really grateful for little pockets that we can find where we can feel love. And, I, I spoke about it a little bit, but when we came here last year, um, it was the first time when I went in and he had texted me, he's like, Mom, get in here, you have to be in here, and the youth thing, and they were doing oh, this yeah. um, talent show, and when he started testosterone, I was so worried because his voice before testosterone, I, I would just have him sing to me all the mm -hmm. time, and so I remember driving up to Primary Children's and just crying, oh. thinking, I'm never going to hear him sing again, and yeah. if I do, it's like it's not going to be the same. Yeah. And he had me come in last year, and he was standing up there with one of his friends that he had made, and he had been so lonely. And so seeing him up there, and he sang, and I just cried, and thought he's going to make it. He's going to be okay, and yeah. we're going to figure this out, and he's going to find his group. And um, so coming here is just—it's just powerful. Thank you. That brought up a lot of oh, emotions <laughs> and memories and feelings. Um, I am so terribly sorry that you didn't feel welcomed and embraced and loved in the place should that the should have been the safest place. And I, I truly hope that you are finding safety in other, in other places and other communities. That was one of the hardest things for me. Gosh, we lost this idyllic thing that we thought we had, you know, our family and our kids. And then through that really hard, hard is such a stupid word. 
it does not capture even a little bit what this journey is and and um, and how devastating and, and glorious it can be um, and we we lost what we thought was real and then we lost the community that we thought was real and then like dominoes everything else for me anyway everything that I thought and believed with my whole soul was real um, and that's why I say if I could look back if I could go back to myself seven years ago and just say get ready <laughs> buckle up um, and and also the growth that has happened for for me personally but then also our family and the ways in which we've been able to reach out to others I remember um, crying in our bedroom one day, which was a normal occurrence at that point, um, and saying, why is this happening? Why is our kid gay? Like, and, and like, what made him gay? Was it the too much soy milk? Like we were, I mean, we were grasping for any, you know, why, you know, why is this happening to us? And, and I was very, why is this happening to me? <laughs> you know, um, because, because it was happening to all of us. And my husband said, maybe it's so that um, at some point, you will, you will find the strength to help someone else whose kid is just coming out and they're feeling all these things. And I just said, no, the, I don't want, I don't care about anybody else. Like the cost, that cost is too high. I just want the life that I thought we had. <laughs> and, and, and through all the, of that loss and learning and changing um, to come to where I am now, there are also not words. Um, I don't, I don't know how to articulate the ways in which I've changed to say that now I love fully where I thought I did I thought I did and now I can say oh here are the ways that I didn't you can't have your license until you're an Eagle Scout um, we won't pay for your reception if you don't get married in the temple like those things you know like those those benchmarks that you have to that you have to perform so that I feel like a good parent um, and, and, and so that we can signal to everybody around us that, that we are that good family. And, and, and changing that, because all of that is gone, and changing that to um, the, the capacity I now have to see my child as they really are and as they always have been, and I just didn't fully recognize them. And then to take such great pride in even though it has nothing to do with me. I said, I, I can't take the blame and I can't take the credit. <laughs> they just came that way. But to, to have so, so much pride in, in who they are and, and that they are these really, truly beautiful, successful, and I don't mean monetarily, they're successful human beings. They're contributing to society. Um, and, and that came through some really hard lessons from me because they were always that person. I just couldn't see it. So, I don't know if we have time left. No, we're, out. we're out of time. Darn. Okay. Okay. Like, do we stay or do we make them and make them come and get us? 